This artwork was created by artificial intelligence, and so is this one, and this one, and all of these. At the 2022 Colorado State Fair, Jason Allen's AI-generated artwork won in the category of emerging digital artists, beating human competitors. The news sparked debate about the ethics of AI text-to-image generators and what their role should or shouldn't be in the art world. These AI text-to-image generators have taken the internet by storm and have been used both as a tool and a toy by professional and amateur artists alike. But how do they work? How are they being used? And how do today's artists feel about this powerful new technology? Let's start with what an AI text-to-image generator actually is. Well, essentially, it's a software that creates an image from a text input or prompt. And to build one of these, you'll need a huge data set of pairs of text and images to train the AI. We did not go through the internet and find the images ourselves. I mean, that is something that others had already done. Our, our real work only started afterwards. DALI 2 and Midjourney have not yet made their datasets public. However, the open source AI, Stable Diffusion, has been more transparent about what it trains its AI on. There's now big data sets which have been scraped from the internet, publicly available. And these we used, namely the lion data sets, which are out there consisting of billions of images that we can train upon. Lion is a non-profit organization that collects image text pairs on the internet and organizes them into data sets based on factors such as language, resolution, likelihood of having a watermark, and predicted aesthetic score. They get these image text pairs from another non-profit organization called Common Crawl which scrapes billions of web pages monthly and then releases them as massive data sets. The AI must then learn to make sense of the visual structure of these images and how they relate to their accompanying text. So when this training then finally completes, we have a powerful model that makes the transition between the text and images. The next step is a process called the fusion. Here, Visual noise is incrementally added to the image in tiny steps, gradually destroying the training image and then teaching the AI to reverse this process from visual noise to an image that looks like the original training image. The end product of thousand times adding a tiny bit of noise will look like you pulled the antenna cable from your TV set. Uh, just static, just noise there. No signal left anymore. After applying this process to billions of training images, the AI can learn to start with pure visual noise and construct from this noise entirely new images. This means that a user can now give a text prompt to the AI, say, an apple with a cowboy hat in the style of Kandinsky. And the AI will use what it has learned about apples, cowboy hats, and the artist Kandinsky to create from noise a new or multiple new visual representations these generative AI tools have sparked huge debates among artists and critics because they can be trained on data sets that contain images of human artists' work, potentially letting anybody create new work in their style. I think we're going to have to figure out either a way for artists to get compensated if their names or images come up in the data sets or for them to just completely opt out if they don't want to have anything to do with it. If a brand campaign is obviously appropriated from a person's artwork, whether it was made with AI or otherwise, it's just not a good thing. And I, I hope that there'll be kind of you know, public um, standing up against that. Artists are also worried about how fast and effectively AIs can produce visual art. After all, how can they compete with a software that can go from concept to completion in less time than it takes them to write an email? So I've seen the goal of my research never as wanting to replace human beings, human intelligence or the like. I see Stable Diffusion, much like a lot of other um, tools that we're seeing there, as just an enabling technology which enables the artist, the human being, the user utilizing these tools to then do more or do the things that they were already doing better, but not replacing them from the best. I don't think that Stable Diffusion or other generative AI models are actually becoming a replacement for creativity. Researchers and tech companies 
are already racing towards the next stage of generative AI art. Meta has released examples of its text-to-video AI that's in development. And Google has unveiled Dream Fusion, a text-to-3D AI. Some visual artists have already started incorporating generative AI tools into their workflow and pushing this technology to create animated art. AI generators almost came out of nowhere. And so we're still kind of wrestling with this technology and how we can use it as artists and how the public can use it. For me, the, the new thing that I've gotten really excited about was AI animation. There was a piece that I did in the last video I posted where I uploaded a video of somebody running and then I gave it the text prompt, turn this into an abstract geometric painting. It's almost like having a superpower as an artist, really, potentially. Um, and so that's, that's really exciting. And I think we're maybe gonna be able to, to take on more ambitious projects than we ever thought possible.